Okay, buenos dias. Welcome to Skip the Culture Shock. And today we're going to talk about the one thing that brought me to San Pancho in the first place. Why I love it so much and why I keep coming back. And that is because I am a nature geek and San Pancho is nature geek heaven. Honestly, uh, the abundance here is just amazing. Every tree, every bush is just laden with these tropical fruits and nuts and berries that I've never seen before. Big, huge ones, funny little round ones. There's long pods, there's short little bumpy pods, there's nuts and berries, there's bright red, there's green, there's bumpy, there's smooth, there's spiky. Just things that you would never ever seen before. It's just amazing. It's a very hilly, jungly, terrain. It's got, it's just got verdant, lush vegetation, jungles and vines and trees and birds. When you're driving along the highway near San Pancho, you notice how green it is. There's beautiful vines covering everything and lush trees everywhere. And this is Beautiful butterflies all over the place. Birds. Beautiful butterflies. With this lush, lush, naturally uh, wet area, which supports this beautiful vegetation, and this thick green vegetation supports a lot of wildlife. They have where there's abundance of food and fruit on the trees, you'll have an abundance of wildlife. And along with these, all of this wonderful habitat, you've got tons and tons of birds, beautiful tropical birds. You'll see parakeets, you'll see mot moths, you'll see trogons, you'll see vermilion flycatchers, you'll see um, golden cheeked woodpeckers, you'll see just brilliant, gorgeous birds. a troop of parrots that lives here in Las Olas and they like to feed on some trees over here that have these little pine cone like nuts on them and the ground underneath the trees is just littered with the husks of these pine cones that they've discarded. 
Oh. And you'll see um, the seas are just full of fish and shrimp. And you'll see the fishing boats out there. Because you've got such this bounty of fish, you get a lot of shorebirds. So you'll get the pelicans and the frigate birds that you can watch fishing. And you can see the shorebirds like the egrets and the herons and the ducks and the mergansers and, and the um, and hingas and the cormorants and the coots and all kinds of just beautiful little shorebirds. All along the shore here, sea turtles come and crawl upon the beach as they've done for millions of years to lay their eggs. And they come up here in great numbers. The type of turtle you'll see here is the olive ridley turtle. And they come up here almost all year round, just not so much in like March and April and May. Then when the hot days of summer come, like July, August, then they'll start coming back. And then they'll keep coming back until December, or January even, and uh, laying their eggs. Their eggs look like little ping pong balls. And you'll often see on the, walking on the beach here, the hatched eggs, they have these just white papery, leathery papery little shells, and you'll see them all over the place. There's a group here that protects the, the turtle nests from poachers because for some reason here, they like to dig up the eggs and eat them um, because they think it's an aphrodisiac which it's not. But once these crazy ideas get in people's head, it's really hard to dislodge them. So they think it's an aphrodisiac, and if they see a turtle laying, an egg, laying its nest, they will dig them up and sell the eggs and eat them. Then they sell them for a very, very low cost. It's really not even worth it. I don't even know why they bother. They bother. Um, also here you're gonna see a lot of, rep not a lot, you're gonna see some reptiles. The, the biggest one you're gonna notice is the iguanas. They can be about this big and they generally keep to themselves and sit in a tree or by the side of the road uh, sunning themselves, getting their body temperature up to that that they need to um, operate on. So this is, they're not, uh, they, they're not gonna harm you. If you just keep going about your business, they'll just keep going about their business and there's really nothing to worry about. Don't harm them, they're not dangerous in any way. You also see a number of little small lizards running around, little geckos scurrying up the sides of the walls and the ceilings of the, your accommodation. You'll see little animals running around out in the trees and you'll see maybe some little skinks scurrying along beside the roadside, scurrying away when they hear you coming. Again, remain calm, they're not scary, they're not gonna hurt you. They're, they're just going about their business. You'll see iguanas, you'll see geckos, you'll see um, skinks and animals that'll scurry all by and they're just... Another really cool thing that's extremely common in Mexico are strangler figs. Now you, you probably, unless you really look, you probably won't notice them, but what strangler figs are, are a, uh, a type, type of vine. They start out as a vine and they grow up around a palm tree. A long, long, tall, thin, straight palm tree. They just grow up around it, grow up around it. And until they get up to the very kind of top of it and then they um, send out branches and leaves and then they keep going and they set out more vines and they set out more leaves and they keep going around the palm tree and around the palm tree and eventually they'll reach a point where they completely cover the palm tree a lot of times you can't even tell there's a palm tree there and they will often kill the palm tree by just strangling it out and they can become absolutely huge like I'm going to show some pictures of that here because it's it's kind of an interesting cool phenomenon
Another thing you'll see throughout Mexico are termite mounds. In Mexico, termites build their nests in trees. And what they do is they'll build sort of dark brown, football-shaped mounds that are eh, about this big, quite big, sort of football-shaped, just sitting there on the side of a tree. You will, it's full of termites, but you will never see the termites. And the reason you will never see the termites is because they never come out into the open air because they don't like the light. So what they do is they'll build a little tunnel all the way from their mound into the earth, and then they'll all along the tree. So you'll see the little trail going from the termite mound, if you look closely, all the way down to the earth. And the termites are inside that. And you'll never see them. And again, there's absolutely nothing to worry about, nothing to be afraid of. They won't hurt you. And another thing that you'll see in Mexico are epiphytes. So these are plants that grow on the branches of trees way high up in the canopy. You'll see orchids growing that way, and then you'll also see bromeliads growing that way, and tillandsias growing that way. So they're kind of air plants. They have aerial roots. Their roots don't ever go in the ground. Their roots they use to just grab around the branch of the tree and provide support for them. And then they'll send their leaves up. They don't get nutrition from the soil because their roots are not in the soil, they're in the air. They have aerial roots. So if you're interested in pursuing the nature opportunities, and there are many here in Puerto Vallarta, and there's a lot that I haven't mentioned, such as whale watching and dolphin watching and stuff like that. There are many, many companies that will take you on nature tours. Now the ones we kind of like to recommend are Luis Morales of San Pancho Birding. He's a very knowledgeable and experienced birding guide and he will take you around and show you the birds, show you great places to bird watch. And you can also hire Luis to take you to San Blas where you can go on a tour of the mangroves in a boat and you, are, you will see all kinds of birds there, crocodiles, turtles, and he will usually hire a guide called Chencho. And Chencho is an extremely gifted bird sighter. He can just see a little tiny bird way back in through the trees there from a long ways away that you would never see without Chencho there. Now you can also, if you don't want to hire Luis you, and you have a rental car, you can drive to San Blas yourself. And you can see the crocodile sanctuary there. It's just by the side of the road on your left as you're heading to San, San Blas. And there's a pull out there and kind of a fence. And beyond that, there's this big lake and the, there'll be crocodiles all lined up the beach. It's quite cool. Some of them are quite huge. And then just keep going a little bit further and on your right you will see the, um, I think it's called El Tobara, El Tobara. And that is where the boats leave to take you on a tour through the mangroves. And it's well, well worth it. It's very, very cool. There's another place in Loda Marcos, which is another great birding area where you can see tons of birds, and it's called Mar al Cielo. And it's kind of like a birding sanctuary, kind of like a little lodge where you can either go for the day, for lunch and birding, or you can even stay there overnight for like a package deal. And um, there's some very rare birds that live there that you don't see anywhere else. Really bright, colorful little birds. I forget the name now. But um, just beautiful, colorful little birds that you, uh, that you can see there, which are found in a few other places in the rest of the world. So I hope you enjoyed this little talk about nature in San Pancho. Yeah, it's very near and dear to my heart. And it's like I said, it's what brought me here, and it's what keeps me here. Hasta luego.